Denise Minanen with the news from Bahrain Television. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister visited Bahrain Investor Services Center in the presence of the Deputy Prime Ministers, Chairman of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, businessmen and investors. He listened to the problems faced by investors and businessmen, discussed ways to find proper solutions, ordering for them to be implemented and provide the facilities needed to ease the work at their center. His Royal Highness delegated the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Rationalizing Expenditures to look into the reasons why investors' requests are being delayed and accepting the license application application requests for investment projects that were applied for a specific period of time. He also delegated the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid Zayani, to implement the solutions agreed upon instantly and also to improve the electronic system for license applications for investment projects to avoid certain problems. He directed to reduce the number of government agencies which associate in the investment license requests and refer it to the specialized agencies and to reduce the conditions and procedures for the granting of licenses for investment projects. The Prime Minister stressed that government bodies should facilitate the procedures for investors as delays are not acceptable in order to support investment. He stressed for continued follow-ups by officials to always be available when needed and solve investors' problems and ensure that their applications are not being delayed. He confirmed that he personally follows investors' notes and complaints and the coordinating committee also provides follow-ups chaired by the Crown Prince to help increase investment operations to boost the economy. He stressed the government's keenness to improve Bahrain's investment, to cope with the international market and to meet investors' needs. Mr. Zayani expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's visit, loading his continuous follow-up and wise directions to achieve progress in Bahrain in economy and services. He also lauded the government's efforts to provide the suitable economic environment to attract investors to help with the progress of the country. The attendees loaded His Royal Highness' continuous support and his keenness to facilitate the necessary measures for investors.
On behalf of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Deputy Premier Chairman of the Higher Committee for Information and Communication Technology, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, opened the fourth GCC e-Government Award Conference and Exhibition. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak welcomed the GCC guests and conveyed to them the greetings of the Prime Minister. He said the event confirmed GCC countries' keenness to keep up with ICT and exchange expertise in this field. He pointed out that the government of Bahrain has worked since 2005 on developing electronic services and has achieved many accomplishments in this field, including topping the chart of Arabi government readiness, becoming 18th internationally. The deputy premier thanked the government authority for organizing the event, wishing it success in enhancing Gulf joint action. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication, Kamal Ben Ahmed, delivered a speech thanking the prime minister for his directives to develop Bahrain's ICT and congratulated him on being granted ICT award by the International Telecommunication Union. He said the international community is now looked at Bahrain as an advanced country in the field of ICT, thanks to the governmental support to this field and the follow-up of the Higher Committee for ICT. Kamal Ben Ahmed said thanks to such support, Bahrain has been able to provide advanced e-services to the people. After that, the Deputy Premier honoured the winners of the GCC Government Award Conference and Exhibition 2015. He also opened the exhibition held on the sidelines of the event, which includes representatives of all GCC countries consisting of 18 governmental authorities showcasing their experience and projects in the field of e-government. The concept of a regional e-government awards event was first proposed by Bahrain in 2008 and now the Kingdom is proudly playing host to the fourth edition of the GCC e-government awards conference and exhibition. The two-day event opened with an awards ceremony which showcased the great progress being made across the region. It was an idea that uh, thrown by Bahrain in 2008 when we hosted all the uh, CEOs of e-government programs in the GCC. After uh, seven years we are happy to have, uh, have the event uh, here in Bahrain and uh, we are proud that for the first time all the six UCC countries awarded and uh, get you know, some awards. I think due to the maturity that uh, we reached uh, all together, uh, the jury said it was very difficult, very tough competition. This is why they uh, recommended to give more than one award uh, in some categories. The e-government awards were conceived as a mechanism to stimulate progress in the development and delivery of government e-services due to the vast potential which stems from individuals and businesses as well as government bodies being able to conduct their affairs with revolutionary efficiency. I think all what we are doing in e-government is to make sure that we are realizing the digital economy in our region. Today our region has done fantastic uh, uh, work during the past decade but still we need to do more. Bahrain is ranked as, as you know, uh, number 18 in the world and the first in the Gulf, but there's not enough. We need to do more in order to maintain our position and even, even uh, improve our uh, current position at a global environment. This itself affects the business environment in Bahrain. It affects our competitiveness. It affects our ability to attract FDI and foreign direct investment and uh, accordingly our uh, economic development. So it is one element of so many other things all interrelated to each other. The high-level support and regional cooperation that this event fosters are leading to coordinated progress, with neighbouring countries being able to identify major future trends more readily and learn from each other's experiences. The change in the technologies, uh, you know, the social media, it's uh, one of the things that's pressing, the big data, another one, the mobile apps, the way that we started uh, developing the mobile apps, we started with single applications, 
then uh, multiple applications, then ministries having more than each ministry having one uh, application. Now we are trying to think from the citizen point of view and trying to consolidate all the services that from his perspective. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, received today the Speaker of the Representative Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, and other GCC parliamentary speakers participating in the ninth meeting of the heads of GCC parliaments and Shura councils. King Salman hailed the strong Saudi Bahraini relations, loading the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his efforts to achieve progress. He affirmed the importance of these visits in strengthening brotherly ties, confirming that Saudi Arabia will always stand united with Bahrain in combating terrorism and rejecting foreign interferences. Mr. Al Mullah conveyed His Majesty's greetings to King Salman, loading his efforts in contributing to the region and to the Arab nation. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, met yesterday with MP of the House of Lords in the UK, Lord Tariq Mahmoud Ahmed, the concerned minister in fighting extremism in the Interior Ministry, with the Aviation Security in the Transportation Ministry. Lord Ahmed applauded the positive reform in Bahrain led by His Majesty the King and expressed appreciation for the friendly relations between Bahrain and the UK. The Interior Minister asserted that violence is not in the nature of Bahraini society and should be fought jointly, general security and safety cooperation to protect the public as part of the community partnership strategy was also discussed. During the Interior Minister's visit to the UK, he delivered a speech to the Bahraini British Friendship Society. The Interior Minister outlined the incidents in Bahrain since 2011 and how law enforcement is committed to protecting security throughout the nation. He also described how Bahrain continues to face foreign interference and organized terrorism and reviewed the seizure of military grade shipments from Iran, including C4 and Iranian weapons. He also discussed the ongoing anti Bahrain propaganda by Iranian media organizations. Sheikh Rashid expressed appreciation to the society members for being true friends to the kingdom and referred to his speech to the society in 2009 when he spoke of Bahrain remaining a free and open society and of how His Majesty the King's wide-ranging political and social reforms have supported that vision. His Highness the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Thani, received today GCC Interior Ministers on the occasion of their 34th meeting. The attendees expressed appreciation to the Emir of Qatar's efforts in enhancing GCC cooperation. Interior Minister of Bahrain, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, loaded the achievements of Sheikh Abdullah on the Gulf level and for overcoming security challenges, stressing the need to further strengthening cooperation to maintain security and stability. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Nuaimi, inspected a number of schools after the early morning heavy rain. The minister confirmed that the relevant authorities have already taken precautionary measures, which significantly contributed in limiting the damage that could be caused by heavy rain. He stressed that the ministry has already started procedures to deal with a number of damages in several schools, such as leaks, pools and full and partial power cuts, in addition to the collapse of part of the East Rafah Boys Secondary School. Dr. Noame highlighted that students' attendance today was more than 95% despite the rain, while the attendance of teachers was in the normal range. 
Bahrain Met Directorate said thunderstorms shot various parts of the kingdom last night with 24.8 millimeters of rain recorded at Bahrain International Airport, a relatively large amount of rainfall within two hours. The directorate said unsettled weather conditions will continue until tomorrow afternoon with a chance for downpours and strong winds. The directorate urged citizens to take the necessary precautions, keep informed about latest developments and warnings issued by the directorate regarding weather conditions. The Minister of Energy, Dr. Abdul Hussein Ben Ali Meza, opened today the Middle East Heavy Oil Congress. The minister confirmed the growing importance of heavy oil in the oil industry of the Middle East, highlighting the necessity to develop oil inventories and reviewing the latest exploration and production technology to achieve the highest level of performance while protecting the environment. Dr. Meza said the Middle East Heavy Oil Congress is an important regional gathering to discuss this industry. The event promises to provide deep insights on the commercial, regulatory and technical issues concerning the Middle East heavy oil industry and the latest technological advancements made in exploration and production. It is also considered an ideal platform for oil and gas professionals to network with key decision makers and hear from leading dignitaries to get a balanced perspective about the industry. The Minister of Information and Shura and Representative Council Affairs, Mr. Hida al Hamadi, affirmed further cooperation with ministries and government authorities to reduce recurrent expenditures being allocated for advertisements, printing, subscriptions and stationery under the government policy to control and rationalize public spending. He pointed out that the task force would reach out to all ministries and government departments to collect and study important documents to come out with recommendations for reducing recurrent expenditure, adding that the measure would help protect public resources, maintain financial stability and ensure efficient service performance. He directed the task force to study the government's programs and measures to achieve economic efficiency and productivity despite low oil prices. Mr. Hamadi affirmed discussing most viable solutions to reduce recurrent expenditure and will send the final report to the coordinating committee chaired by the Crown Prince on December 1st. And now we turn to business news with you, Danielle. Thanks very much, Yasmina. A very good evening. You're welcome to the business news here on Bahrain Television. Bahrain's Energy Minister, Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, said he expects contracts to be awarded in a few months' time for the implementation of a new oil pipeline link between the kingdoms of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Mirza said an agreement has recently been signed to implement two sections of the oil pipeline. The first section spans 40 kilometres into the Saudi mainland and the second section spans 40 kilometres into the Arabian Gulf Sea. The new pipeline will boost capacity from 260,000 barrels per day to 360 barrels per day. Dr. Mirza said total crude oil used in oil derivatives production is 95 million barrels per year, with 10% consumed locally and 90% exported to various parts of the world, adding that the new oil pipeline project will help maintain Bahrain refineries' competitive position for many years to come. We have signed now with uh, Saudi Aramco to build a new pipeline to replace the existing pipeline which connects Bahrain to Saudi Arabia. So it's a reality. It has been signed. The contract has been awarded. We are also looking at expanding the refinery, modernizing it from 260,000 to 360,000. This will increase the profitability and will improve the environment. And this may cost around $5 billion. And then we have also uh, an expansion project in Banagas, which is the associated gas. Because uh, we have increased the production of Bahrain crude, the associated gas that comes with it, we need to utilize it. So we are building a plant called the uh, LPG plant to convert the associated gas into propane, butane and naphtha. And this will cost around $600 million. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,231.36 points, an increase of 0.82 points above yesterday's closing level. 
the commercial banks and services sectors rose, with investors trading mainly in commercial bank sector shares to the tune of 43.56% of total share value traded. Results show that 44 transactions took place today, involving a volume of 785,957 shares worth 103,678 Bahraini dinars.